tell nobody to stop and recognize that they God. You can look in the mirror and say you God all you want to. That's not going to cause any alchemical processes to take place inside the physical form to cause your energy to rise. My thing is this. If you think <clears throat> that you see a God that's unrealized and that you are a realized God, then you need to go show them. You need to go show them how to get back to their God status. Or you need to stop telling people to recognize that they God because if you ain't doing nothing to aid the ascension, you in the way. You sending off false signals. You sending some, uh, you sending flares in the wrong direction if you ain't telling them the methodology of ascension. You're not telling them the meditation techniques. You're not telling them how to move the energy through the body. You're just telling them to look at themselves and know they God. That's not going to change nothing. I've been hearing niggas say they God all my life. I'm 50 years old. And ain't none of them did no God shit. And so, um, all these people talking about they here to help. Um, they conscious. They in the goddamn way. Them the ones in the way. The ignorant not even in the, in the way no more. The ignorant ain't in the way. It's the conscious ones that's supposed to be aware that's the problem. They the ones that's the problem because they got ideologies rooted in one doctrine and that's it. That's the be all, the end all. So I'm going to tell y'all some tools I use when I meditate. Because some people will think I'm a holy roller. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Muslim, as in Orthodox Muslims over there in the Middle East walking around with Jalabiyas and turbans. I'm not a Hindu by religious doctrine. I'm not a Latter-day Saint, Jehovah's Witness. I ain't none of that. I'm a witch doctor. I'm a Native American medicine man. I'm an ancient healer manifesting modern form. So, I don't care what religion it is. If there's a tool there and I can use it for my advancement and growth, I'm going to use it. If I go to the Christian church and get me some good old gospel music, I'm going to use it. If I can go get me a good prayer out of Islam, I'm going to use it. If it's going to work, I'm going to use it. Now, all these people say, stop falling into the religion. Then they send you all these mixed messages. They tell you don't partner up with another person because that's going to stop your ascension. That's some bullshit. Then they tell you um, don't stay isolated because you came to sin. So they're sending you double messages. Then they tell you to masturbate so that you don't have to have uh, copulation. You don't have to have sex to raise the kundalini energy. But then they tell you don't masturbate because you're wasting energy. They're sending you mixed messages. That ain't no God shit to me. Gods don't send mixed messages. They flat out tell you this is what it is. So, we go into um, meditation, and we start to awaken things within the body. So before we get to that part, when you first go into meditation, you don't do nothing. Meditation, when you first start, is nothing. It's just closing your eyes and seeing the darkness, but practice makes perfect. In the course of meditating, you learn how to move the energy in your body. That got a side effect. It make energy move on its own when you're not consciously willing it to move. Because it has to fill the void. As the void begins to fill, your energy internally starts to change. This is called an alchemical process, an internal alchemical process. This is when the body and the spirit is starting to get in on the same page. All our life, we've been dealing with um, the body and the spirit being going, moving in two different directions, and we never knew it. We never knew that while we were playing sports physically, that we were actually doing spiritual exercises. Hey, Portia, I'll be calling you in a little bit. Um, so, we looking at all of these different techniques of ascension, these different techniques to raise the um, vibrations in the body so that we can assimilate a higher frequency of thought. And you get down to it, it all boils down to two things, the feeling and the thought. If the feeling is true, and the thought is pure. It has to happen. So when you're looking for an ascension, you look into a line of thought with the feeling. Now, in mystic terms, we say uniting the wisdom with the love because the, the thought has to be at a certain level. You can't think like um, an impoverished pig and expect to get the results of a wealthy king. It's not going to happen. Hey, Keisha. Welcome. So, um, 
when these processes start taking place. It's just like when you take a medication you never took for the first time and it gives you a weird sensation. You don't really understand what the medication going to do. You know what they told you it was going to do, but it make you feel funny. But after a while, you get used to the funny feeling, and then you can assimilate the medication for the healing process. It's the same way with the alchemical process. <laughs> it's the same way with the alchemical processes in the body. When you first, when they first start taking place, you have no clue what's going on. You're totally ignorant. You feel this stuff, and you don't know what it is. The craziest thing that you're going to feel is when you feel the kundalini rising and up your back. It's going to literally feel like two snakes crawling up your back. Um, both of them have to be free at each one of the chakras or else they'll get blocked and it'll only partially ascend and you have to start all over. People <clears throat> are evil in some places and they don't want to see others ascend. So there is a method that they use to block your ascent and try to steal your birthright. I'm not going to go over the method. But you need to be aware that as you try to ascend, there's also forces and people. Hey, Christian, it's nice for you to be here too. You have forces and people that don't want you to attain your highest attainment of self. And they're going to do everything they can to stop you. Some of them are going to be your doctor because he's going to try to keep you medicated with some shit you don't need. Some of them might be your lawyer because he's going to try to keep you focused on your legal matters and your money to the detriment of your spirit. Some of them be family members. You know, they push their agendas and swear all of this love talk, but none of them is actually doing anything. Um, hold on one second. I got a letter on. I thought I... Okay. So, none of them is giving you um, anything beneficial to ascend, to awaken, and to deal with this um, psychological deficit. Now, when I say psychological deficit, I say that as opposed to saying that insanity or uh, loss of mentality or loss of the mind because people don't understand that what goes on in the body affects how we think because we confuse. The term is cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when you're not quite sure what you are experiencing, seeing, or perceiving and you slightly confused. This is always the case when a new piece of information is encountered. There's a slight confusion because you have to rationalize it. You got to make this stuff make sense to yourself. You don't have to make it make sense to nobody but you. I see you, India. And so, come here, dog. This stuff. Get in here. Okay, so the energy is like electricity. It works like electricity. Electricity is the clearest example of how spirit energy moves through the body. It takes the path of least resistance. And this is why when, you, when your kundalini begins to rise and it connects at the chakras, if one of them is blocked, it won't go through there. Because it's too much resistance. It won't follow the resistance. So... Um, it's the same with water. Water going to always seek its own level, but water not going to flow uphill because there's too much resistance. So water will flow downhill flawlessly, but it won't flow uphill. And so with the spirit energy, when you don't understand what you're dealing with, you know, all these crazy thoughts coming into your head. Those are tests. The crazy thoughts can be anything from physically hurting somebody to physically hurting yourself to... Um, Committing yourself to a psychiatric war because you don't understand the process that's taking place. All of these different things um, uh, take place in the in the ascension process. So um, I get sit back and I'm watching and I'm listening and I still people still out here praying, dear Lord, help us from this evil. The evil want to leave, but y'all won't let it. The evil want to go, but the people won't let it. Y'all got to understand that. The evil wants to leave, but the people won't let it. And I ain't even talking about the regular, blind, deaf, dumb, average Joe that work a nine to five and ain't got time to do the research. I'm talking about the ones that's supposed to know. The so-called conscious ones. These conscious Negroes. All of them talking about their gods, but not doing no God shit. They in the way. 
I don't care how conscious they is and how high they ascended. If they trying to convince you <clears throat> to do some God shit, but they not giving you no techniques, no formulas, or nothing to help you realize the God self, they in the way. They need to go somewhere and sit down because that information is worthless. It's worthless. You can't use it. So, being that I want to give you some techniques, there's a couple of them. Um, one is through the agency of partners. It's ritual. It's ceremonial magic in the sex game. They've been using it for years in secret in the satanic church, the Catholic church, the Protestant church, the Orthodox church, the Islamic mosque, the Jewish synagogue. They've all been using it. And they just didn't tell y'all because they want y'all to think everything sexual is evil. So the ceremonial magic part is when you can facilitate higher thought, right? And your mind is thinking on the level of an Einstein, so to speak. I like to use Einstein because everybody knows who he is, or Stephen Hawking. Let's say your mind is gravitating at that level, right? Now, it don't matter if you're male or female, you see the opposite sex. And the other person is the embodiment of love energy. You might, when you're in that thought frame, you might seem reclusive, closed off in um, antisocial or asocial. You don't want to really be bothered because you're too busy thinking on higher levels. You're thinking about stars and quasars and somebody telling you about uh, Shaquene and, and their baby down there. You don't give a damn about Shaquene and her baby, all right, because that don't got nothing to do with you moving um, Jupiter back into its correct orbit, you know, so that you can feed off the energies of Saturn and Neptune correctly just by correcting the path of Jupiter. They don't understand that, and you don't want to hear it because it's outside of, it's bringing you back down to ignorance. It's bringing you back down to lower vibrational energy. You want to stay in a higher vibration, so you look for somebody who love energy, matches your mental energy. And that ain't, that ain't easy. That's the hard part, is to find somebody who can connect to the heart where you are in the mind. And so the ceremonial magic work that when you find that person, crown seat, whoever it is, the crown seat here, top of the head. I'm going to do this a couple of times because this is also a ceremonial rite. Okay, now, the crown seat. At the top of the head is the exit of the body. That's the that's the natural exit when you are seeing here. You see the Jews wear the yarmulke over it. Um, the Muslims wear the kufi over it. Uh, Africans wear afros over it. Um, and the Rastas harness it with the dreadlocks. Right? So they want you to talk about how sweet a car is. But you're looking at how to split an atom with the mind. Not with no machines, not with no bombs, with the man. I want to make this helium atom and the two helium atoms on my own without, how the hell am I going to do this? I'm trying to figure out the structure of this atomic formula in my brain and somebody want me to look at a gold chain. That's, that's not going to happen. So sometimes you find those people who are compatible for the ascent and then you can do it ceremonially. Now, sometimes you can't. So now it's all internal and it's all solo at this point. You can use masturbation as a tool of ascension. You can use abstinence as a tool of ascension. You can use um, um, various other meditation techniques like transcendental meditation. Uh, Kriya Yoga is really good. Uh, Paramahansa Yoga and the Kriya Yoga that's a good technique. If you learn Kriya Yoga, you can really cause the Kundalini to rise a lot faster. When you really break it down, Kriya Yoga is the, the, the fire of the serpent dragon. It's, it's, the, it's the, um, the energy that rises in the Kundalini itself. And the uh, Kriya Yoga is the cultivating of that energy. So we're trying to get to this higher state of consciousness. And, and everybody keeps forgetting that it's all about the consciousness. It's all about what goes on in the cranial factor. You know, inside the temple, inside the temple, right here. When you close your eyes and you can see through here, it don't look the same. It's kind of shadowy at first, but it'll clear up. But you got to practice. Now, 
what did take 40, 50 years before does not take that, um, that long now. So, Kriya Yoga is K-R-I-Y-A. Kriya Yoga. Transcendental Meditation is, it's easy to come across both of those. You can look up Paramahansa Yogananda. He got a Kriya Yoga Institute in California. Or you can look up his uh, number one student. I don't know if she's still living because she'd be pretty old, but her name was Daya Mata. And she was a pretty good teacher. Um, there's another, uh, uh, Egyptian Yoga Institute out of Florida who have a lot of good information. Mawada Ashby. If you're in Florida, you might want to visit him. Yes, Kriya Yoga. Uh, Mawada Ashby is the teacher of Egyptian Yoga. See, people think that the Egyptian in the, um, in the, uh, Ayurveda systems are drastically different, never knowing they're the same system in different languages with cultural influences added to them. Black people fail to realize at no time until the last 75 years that we accept Christianity in America, in the islands, in South America. We took the religion. <laughs> you can still go back over it, India. Okay. We took the religion and we concealed the African conjure. They did it in Haiti. They did it in Jamaica. They did it in America. Everywhere black people was Christians, we used to conceal our natural or our native religions, whether it was the Native Americans or whether it was the ones they brought as POWs over here from Africa. Didn't matter. We concealed our traditional doctrine under the veil of Christianity. We didn't never believe that. But there's a side effect. Because of the way it's laid out, it fits so much with our prophecies for the closing of the age the reason we used it it fits so many other prophecies when they stole it out of egypt because the bible is an egyptian document that's been altered by babylonians right so the egyptian doctrine that it was in the new testament what you call your resurrection doctrine your christ doctrine that was the story of isis horus Set and Osiris, where Set slew Osiris, and um, the Queen Mother decided that she would resurrect him through her own womb after he was dead and bring his essence back in his son. So, this is your biblical story. But they don't tell you about is in your Bible, your Jesus is two characters masquerading as a single individual. Only a profiler could tell you that because the religious institutions deliberately covered it up. They deliberately covered it up because they didn't want you to know that Christ was a woman and the son of man was her son. This is the foundation of your Masonic Lodge legend of the widow's son. I'm not going to go into that because I did a whole video on it already. So at the closing of the age, when you get into the revelations, you will see that there's this one dude walking around and he reading this book. But don't nobody never tell you who he is. And they say, couldn't nobody else read the book but one. And then... When he got done reading his book, the New Jerusalem descended out of heaven and Christ came adorned as a bride for her groom. Think about that. Now there's a man walking around on earth, right, conquering shit, putting shit in order. Most of it is um, metaphysically and alchemically. He putting things in order. Then they all ask who can read the book. Can't nobody read the damn book. So here he comes. He well, if nobody want to read the book, I'll just read the book for y'all. Well, where the book at? It's a secret. The book is everywhere at the same time. The book is bound by what you call unified field theory. Right? Unified field theory is the concept of all things being connected. They're all connected. So the unified field theory means that you have to put the book together. You have to first find it. Right? Black was considered like the more the true natives. Most people that are referred to as black were here before a white man. All right, Chris uh, Henderson, let me tell you something about this, sweetie, so you will not be deceived like most of us have been. All Moors are not good. All Moors are not good people. I'm going to tell you that out there. All Moors are not good people, and they don't mean nobody no good but they self. Pay attention to what I'm telling you. The Moors... There's two factions. 
I'm only going to deal with the one that's I call the rogue faction of Moors, right? The matriarchal goddess is correct, uh, Chris. But these Moor thing, y'all got to get this understood. It's two groups of Moors. The ones that we used as infiltrators in order to go get the secrets that they was hiding from us. And then it's the ones who put us in the bondage. I'm going to let that sink in for a second before I go on to the next thing. It's two groups of Moors. The ones we sent in to get our secrets back so we can reclaim our birthright. That's the bad group. No, that's a good group. The ones we sent in to get the secrets back. Then you had other group that sold us out. The one that came with Pietro del Negro with Columbus. Um, the ones that were pushing their children and their offspring that they call conquistadors throughout Central and South America in order to steal all the gold. Them the, them the Moors I'm talking about. No, Obama is from Kenya. Obama is the son of the jackal. He is a usurper. He was trying to claim birthright 